All right, so today we have Emily Bailey from Colorado and Sarah Dyson from Louisiana, both national FFA teacher ambassadors, and they're going to do a, a short presentation here on SAE for All. I was able to view this presentation at the Three Circle Summit in Indianapolis last week and asked Emily if she would come on board and present it for our teachers to, to get a um, a starter class on what SAE for All is and how it will uh, uh be implemented in our program for moving forward. So Emily, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you. So, hi folks, I'm Emily Bailey and I serve in Colorado as a teacher mentor um, to our first through third year ag teachers. And one of the specialty areas that I have the privilege of sharing with people is SAE for All. So if you haven't heard of SAE for All yet, I really encourage you to head to this website, which I'm sharing right now, which is saeforall.org. And so I really want you to think about SAE as this work-based learning component of what we do for students. We already do amazing things for students and showing them amazing opportunities in the agricultural industry. Um, but at some times, we may not meet every single student's need for SAE. And so I have a student um, who was gung-ho in the classroom, took every single class she could, was an amazing FFA officer, served on every committee, did every community service project, was with the, to a T the perfect ag student. Um, but when I had her as a senior in high school, she was talking to me about running for a state FFA office, and I turned to her and I had to tell her, you can't run because you will never get your state degree because you don't have an SAE. And so this model really helps every student in our program, whether they have access to an agriculture background or they have access um, to different work-based learning experiences to give them experience that's meaningful and helps them in pursuing their career. So SAE for All was um, created by the National Council for Agricultural Education, and it's been in the works since 2008. Um, but on this site, you can actually go through and here, um, you can choose what you are. And so we're going to go through the educator stuff today. Um, so I'm an educator and I'm going to access the educator resources and feel free to hop on with me too if you'd like to go through. And so here we have overarching um, PDF. So this has the all of the teacher edition and this is the complete student edition too. And really I want to show you um, the difference in what SAE for All is comparatively to what we already do. Again, what we're already doing is, are, is really similar to what this is. We're just filing it down and making it more purposeful and meaningful um, so we can help every student. So this is what SAE for All looks like. Here we have this top portion. Um, that's the yellow and green and light blue colors. And this is our foundational portion of SAE. Foundational portions of SAEs are for every single student who walks in our room, whether we have them for six months or four years. And so this is our opportunity to really let students find themselves and, go, get, and give them employability skills and awareness to help them in choosing um, and preparing for the, their eventual career. So in this foundational portion, students go through career exploration and planning, employability skills for college and career readiness, Financial, plan financial management and planning, workplace safety and ag literacy. And so this foundational SAE actually carries on throughout their four years of high school. And as you can see, there's three tabs here. We have the awareness tab, the intermediate tab, and the advanced tab. And Sarah, so do you, uh, Emily, I don't see that on my screen. Sarah, do you have that on your screen? No, I can't see that. I was about to say that. I don't know if the computer hasn't yeah. caught it or not. Would you, would you mind refreshing? Sure. There we go. There, that's what. Yeah, sorry. <clears throat> All right, so on this page, you can see that these are the foundational 
uh, pieces. There's career exploration and planning, employability skills for college and career readiness, personal financial management and planning, workplace safety and ag literacy. And this foundational piece, again, it goes through all four years. So if you look, we have different like levels. We have awareness, intermediate and advanced. And so students should be actively doing these things, maybe in your classroom, maybe outside of your classroom, however you want to set it up, um, where they're getting an awareness level, they're getting an intermediate level, and they're getting an advanced level. And so awareness is really, you know, exactly what we do in a career exploration unit, where we're having students um, explore careers in agriculture. Whereas on the advanced level, that career exploration and planning is really, you know, creating um, a budget of how they're going to spend their financial aid and if they're going to need a part-time job to get through college. Um, those things are, are that kind of planning that we need. Once students have a good grasp of what career or career area they might want to go into, then we go down to what we already know and love about SAE, which is these immersion types, which are the blue. So on this blue screen, uh, we have our already known um, SAEs, but we have a couple extra ones. So we have the placement internship, um, ownership entrepreneurship, research, which is broken down into three areas now, the school-based enterprise, and the service learning. So again, once students have um, a good idea of what, they, what their skills are, what their passions are, and what career they want to go into, they can choose an, an immersion SAE where they get to actually experience that career. And so um, placements and internships, the, the difference in internship is, so I always use this example. So um, you have a student who works at like a co-op. Well, in, in a placement experience, um, they might just be like running the scales and doing tickets. In an internship experience, they'd like to become um, a finance officer. And so instead they're working behind the scenes with the finance officer in an internship where they're learning how to do those things at a co-op. The difference between ownership and entrepreneurship is ownership is um, potentially like owing, owning um, um, livestock for a year. So we always use like, so we buy hogs here in our state um, in March or April and we sell them in August. And so that would be an ownership experience. They own them for that time. Whereas a breeding operation where they're breeding three sows is more of an entrepreneurship because they're starting um, their own full-fledged business um, that has a lot, of, um, a lot of entrepreneurship capabilities of, of a small business that we would see in our economy. In research, we have experimental, which is our normal experimental type. Analysis, which is where they can analyze and analyze data um, or other information and come up with a conclusion. And then we also have invention. So you have students who are crazy about, um, you know, inventing new products that are very exciting for the agriculture industry. They can actually do an SAE where they invent products. The school-based enterprise is where you're running a supervised agricultural experience out of your school. And this one's very interesting and exciting. Um, how we have it set up in Colorado, and we're hoping to create some models for other states as well, is we would have like a board of directors, um, which are a group of adults that kind of oversee that school-based enterprise and are experts in that area. And then we have officers um, who are students who are executive officers who take care and run the business, and you'll have student workers who may get paid an hourly wage. So a lot of school-based enterprises that we see are greenhouses, Service learning. Service learning is um, where a student creates a service project. They reflect on it, they make changes to it, and they do it again. And so the person who's organizing this event would have a service learning project where the students who might work for the service project are, get community service for it. So that's, in a nutshell, the changes of what SAE for All are bringing us. But the main thing is this part right up here, this foundational piece. This foundational piece is for every single student. And sometimes we have to be aware that there's gonna be times where we might not get students, especially if we have them for a semester in class, um, to these work-based learning experiences down here, but we can provide them the skills necessary to really give them um, some help and, and really give them some direction in work-based learning so they know what they want to do in their future career. So if we keep looking through here, um, this is the teacher's guide. And so it goes through a lot of amazing um, ideas for you to share. It shows you a lot of what students um, 
can do and gives you ideas. It actually gives these students or gives students these profiles so they can learn more about what an SAE is, similar to the SAE idea cards. And it also helps teachers, um, you know, if you're like, I don't really understand best based on Emily said about service learning, you can come down in here and read more about it. Um, what I really like about this teacher's guide um, is it has implementation implementation tips. And so it's an amazing, um, amazing resource for all of us because everything is already created, which I love. So everything is ready um, for us to just print and take into our classrooms. And so that's why I love this SAE for all because we've spent a lot of time in creating it um, and making sure um, that we have all the pieces connected. And so, like I said, this is the teacher's guide, um, but the student guide is actually print ready for students to take and actually go through activities. It has rubrics um, and it actually has um, different graphic organizers for the students to fill out as well. Sarah, would you like to add anything? No, I think you're doing um, you're doing well. So with the student guide that, that that's available, um, they would be able to print that out and use that as a tool in the classroom. Yeah, let's go ahead and just we're going to look at it. So this is the student guide. Sorry, it kind of opened in the middle here. But this is the student guide, and as you can see, it looks extremely similar to um, to the teacher guide. And so in here, um, it actually has, it shows the students everything. There is some reading, we all love reading. Um, and so, but it's print ready for students. So it has what is an SAE, um, is this a fit for me? There's some good video links um, embedded in them. This is the roadmap like I showed you before, so the same thing. It tells them exactly how to get started. Um, and then inside of it, it should have some worksheets. This might not be the worksheet pack. So this is the information sheet for them. Let me see if I can find, oh, sorry, <laughs> let's, let's just try this again. All right, so that's for them to see um, and understand a little bit more about um, what SAE for All is. That might be something that I gave to um, parents so they could see it. But if you look back here, this is on the saeforall.org site. Um, these are the independent learning guides, and this is where um, the activities will come in. So I'm just going to look at the foundational side, and I'm going to do the, um, the download activities one for the awareness, which is where we would start with our freshmen. And so it brings you to Box, which is managed by FFA.org, and you can actually, um, well, I want to do SAE Activity Guide A1. And then here we go. So it actually gives the it on my screen, Emily. Oh, thank We're you. still on the website. You know. Yeah, sorry. I keep forgetting I have to stop sharing and share a different page. <laughs> You're okay. All right, here we go. So this is the SAE for all. Um, activity sheet. And so it actually tell, you know, it goes through, we're going to go through these links um, and they're going to take some career inventories. From here, they fill out um, information. So the top four careers they chose and why they go here to summarize. Um, so after completing two interest inventories, identify your top five careers. Um, and then it has some reflection for them. So it's already created interactive. These are already um, 
these are already activities that were created in that guide that I showed you previously, but now we have a graphic organizer and a literal one, two, three, four, five of what we need to complete for students. So this is jam packed, ready for everybody. So with that, SAE for All has been truly impactful for my students. It's helped me a ton in my first few years teaching because I have the oppor I have the opportunity to truly know students inside and out, their skills, their abilities, their passions, and it helps me really align them better to a career or to a business or anyone in my community who can help them gain the skills and knowledge that they need to be successful. So Emily, give me some um, ideas of what you do in your classroom. Do you spend a whole week on this? Do 30 minutes uh, a particular day of every week to, to cover these these SAE lessons? How how what's the best practice you're giving your uh, your young teachers in Colorado? What's the uh, what's the best way to do this? So I think it's completely up to the teacher and how you want to implement into, into the program. How I did it was um, I had two says, which were on Tuesdays, we did SAE. And so that might look like five minutes of we log into AET and make sure, make sure our record books are up to date. Um, but it might be the whole 50 minute class period where my intro students are actually completing this all or this entire activity. And so I had Tuesdays, my students knew that that was dedicated to SAE. I know that other teachers have implemented that way. However, I have a cohort who went through SAE for all training with me and she has a five day school week every other Friday. So she's like on odd Fridays, she does SAE and on even Fridays, she does FFA. Um, so like competition um, work and things like that. So on the odd Fridays, she would do SAE for all activities as well. Um, and so this is um, something that you can you can implement however you want. However, I would say that I would start with your freshmen with this awareness level as you kind of get to know SAE for all, especially you haven't, if you haven't went through a training, I would start with your freshmen and go through um, that with them. It might be one day a week. It might be every other week. It could be um, a unit. So it could be like a whole month of time. Um, and then the next year, continuing that in the intermediate level with those freshmen again at your own at your own pace, and doing it again with your with your um, newly like newly upcoming students. So I think trickling it in is the best way to do it, and the best way to implement it that won't um, overwhelm you. Thank you, Sarah. Do you have anything to add before we go? I don't. All right. Well, uh, wish you both a happy Valentine's Day and a great weekend. And thank you for, for taking your time to help us get this off the ground in Louisiana. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. much.